that you don't care. <laughs> yeah. Cryptocurrency, crypto, crypto. This ICO, panel is called Social Media for Mass Adoption. FOMO. And I just want to set the tone for what mass adoption is and what they'll be talking about. So, you hear the term mass adoption all the time, and it's thrown around by everybody. Everyone kind of has their different uh, definition for it. Basically, I say this all the time, my mailman, my mother, my girlfriend, they learn about blockchain from YouTube. That's how they learn the cryptocurrency education. And for, or, in order for mass adoption to happen, in order for this industry to succeed, eventually everybody needs to start using blockchain. So YouTube's the front line. I'm going to give you guys a short analogy that I use all the time, and it seems to work. So if I were to put up a map of the United States in this wall, pretend there's one of those big, huge maps that you see in, used to see in sixth grade, and I were to give Aaron Beatles over here a dart and have him stand up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I gave you that dart. I said, I want you from there to hit New York City. I want you to hit that dart, New York City. And you were to throw that dart, where would you land? Okay, so if you don't land in the ocean and kill us all, you probably will land in maybe Omaha, Nebraska. In Omaha, Nebraska, when a guy is, is working very hard as a blue collar job, and he goes home and turns on the news, and he starts hearing words like cryptocurrency, blockchain, Ethereum. He has no idea what that means. All he knows is, is possibly a way out of poverty, which he wants. So he does the first thing that we all do. We take out our smartphones, which is mass adopted. And he Googles it, and Google's mass adopted as well. And then he has the options to read some articles, a white paper. He's not going to do any of that. He doesn't know what that means. He's going to go straight to YouTube and hear it explained to him in five minutes or less from a relatable person that he understands, like Ken Bosak, like Crypto Love, like Crypto Beatles, like the Miggity Miner, like Jason Randall, the Crypto Sonnet, and the one and only Crypto Blood. They are very important, and they're about to tell you just how important they are. So, without further ado, I'm going to bring up Crypto Blood. What's up, Chuck? A minute? Okay. Thanks. Didn't know we were doing this. I would have had something prepared. Um, but <laughs> um, what am I talking about? Who you are. Huh? Who you are. So me, I'm Crypto Blood from Detroit. You guys probably know I always wear the D-Town hat. But uh, been in cryptos for about six years. It'll be six years in March of 2019. And, man, it's been a journey. Um, I've seen the, the, the community has changed a lot from when we, you know, when I first got into the space. Um, it was really more about leaving the current system, the financial um, corruption, you know, and really starting a new system where the banking was in our hands. And I think we're kind of getting away from that a little bit. And so that's what my whole goal is, to kind of get people to remember why we got into cryptocurrencies. And it was to really get away from <clears throat> the the system, you know, inflation is something that is just robbing our wealth from us all, really, you know, and and you know the the rich really get to benefit from this money, this cheap money, at the top, and it trickles down. But by the time it gets to us, it's not, you know, it's not worth anything. So um, I'm sure you guys have heard a dollar has worked, like I think lost 99 percent of its value since 1932 or something like that. So it's time for a change, but we got to know why we're changing. It's not about speculation. It's not about moons and Lambos and all of that. It's about really taking the power back from fiat, from the central banks. Yeah. Take a seat, bro. Next up is the very charismatic Jason Randall, a crypto somniac. You got a minute to say whatever you want. I am Jason Randall. I uh, came out of corporate. I'm, I'm a suit, as you may be able to tell. And uh, I spent 
a considerable portion of my time. I, I've known about Bitcoin since 2008. I didn't really get involved until about two years ago. I got involved in Ether early, made a little bit of money, and was like, I need to know why this happened. Why I, I don't understand it, so I need to know why. And basically spent all of my free time from there studying, learning. Again, started on the YouTube channels and ended up, you know, reading a white paper a day for quite some time. Um, decided that. Not only is this the future, but I had to do whatever I could do to try to help people understand what it is, help people understand what the value of it is, and uh, and so I moved into the space full time at the beginning of this year. Um, I think a big factor in mass adoption is just going to become familiarity. On the way over here, uh, we took a lift ride over here, and uh, the cab driver was an older guy. He was 71 years old, and he was like, oh, what are you going to the conference center for? And, and uh, you know, told him we were coming for the Litecoin Summit. And he's like, oh, I have some Bitcoin. I don't really know how it works, though. Right? He was asking me, how do I get it? How do I get it out of this wallet? How do I use it? What do I do with it? So, uh, you know, obviously, I didn't have time to explain it all in a cab ride, but just that kind of stuff. So people are becoming more aware, but so many people don't even still know what this is and properly understand, you know, why it's valuable. And so that's part of what I've taken to YouTube to do. The absolutely beautiful Miggity Miner. How's everybody doing? My name is Matt McMillan, also known as Miggity Miner on YouTube. Um, I've been in crypto since about 2013 in a retail capacity, a hobby miner, um, just on my own time. I uh, started my channel about seven months ago out of, uh, again, just a hobby, and I uh, thought it'd be fun to start a small community. Um, started covering a trading bot called Crypto Hopper, and uh, just was really just doing walkthrough videos on using the bot. Um, things grew, you know, I, I remember doing my first video, or doing a video of hitting 100 subscribers and how I was excited about that. You know, now we're, you know, seeing 1,000, 5,000, 6,000 building large communities. And, and I think for me, doing the channel, the biggest uh, reward that I saw was when people were coming to me saying, thank you for the content you're putting out. And so um, that's really just continued to drive me. A little bit of background, I come from centralized banking. So um, I used to work in the IT space and centralized banking and all the big banks. I think I realized that um, blockchain had a voice when big banks were looking for blockchain developers. I knew at that point that we were on to something. So um, officially, I went full time three weeks ago with my YouTube channel. So glad to be here. The super humble Robert Beatles. And his little less humble son, Aaron Beatles. What's going on, people? So my name is Robert Beatles, also known by, uh, as Crypto Beatles. Um, let's see, I guess, where should I start? Uh, Christian, father, husband. I've been with uh, his mom since we were 14 years old, so that's my son, Aaron, if you guys want a little shock right there. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, I started real young, had to, you know, figure out a way to do more and be more because, you know, I was 14 years old with his mom. So I uh, started building businesses. So I built a lot of businesses, software companies, construction companies. And uh, people, you know, started asking me a lot of questions, especially in the software side of things, about Bitcoin and Ethereum and, you know, all these different projects. I got into crypto, I think, around 2011 or something like that. And then by about 2017 or so, I decided to, uh, you know, answer a lot of their questions, help them out. So we created a, a YouTube channel. And then also to kind of educate um, on the YouTube channel, we bring in all these different CEOs and founders of all these other different projects that allow them a platform to, you know, basically talk about their projects. And we never charge. It's always free. Um, you know, we actually give away $100 on every single one of our episodes. So that way the people can actually participate, you know, on my dime. And then to, you know, kind of give back even more, we, you know, created our own project called Monarch to try and help, um, you know, educate as well as, you know, bring, you know, the masses into uh, cryptocurrency. So it's been, you know, quite a journey. It's been a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, met a lot of great people along the way. So The best looking man in the room, Crypto Love. Boom shakalaka, what's going on everybody? Uh, so my name is Randall and I am, 
have a channel called Crypto Love. And so I got into crypto in the beginning of 2017 because a friend of mine told me that Bitcoin is going to be awesome. You'll be able to retire with one Bitcoin. So I was like, this sounds cool. I'll find out more. And so my, like my first year in crypto was awesome because it just kept going up and up and up. And I was like, man, this is freaking awesome. But uh, August of last year, I started a YouTube channel um, basically because I didn't know what to do with uh, the Bitcoin Bcash hard fork. And so I was trying to figure out what to do with my Bitcoin. And uh, so I watched some YouTube videos, found some funny guys. It looked fun. I figured I'd try doing it as well. And so with YouTube, what I try and do is just educate and entertain, try and be a little bit funny. And uh, my background, I... Uh, you know, well, I didn't graduate high school really, but then I went to summer school and then uh, my parents wanted me to go to college, so I did that. And then I got a job doing computer programming for NASA, but I didn't like sitting in front of a computer all day, so I quit that and moved to France and then became a veterinarian. And, uh, <laughs> and now, <laughs> yeah, I, I also did, re <laughs> I did real estate wholesaling for a while. I built an SEO company. Um, but, oh yeah, I was a bike mechanic for a while. I want to be a car mechanic one day, that's my goal. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, but I have a lot of fun doing YouTube and uh, so I really enjoy that. And just being able to give back, like that's, that's the coolest thing about it. Like it makes me feel good because money's awesome and it's really cool, but you know, how much stuff can you buy? What really fills me up is just being able to give back to people. So that's cool. And an interesting tidbit, uh, I learned all my cryptocurrency information, all my blockchain education from Crypto Love. Uh, at one point, uh, my company, Heidi Yu, she's, she's a wonderful entrepreneur. She said, you know, we got to get into this, this blockchain industry. It was something we were already doing. Uh, we were an influencer marketing uh, agency. And around September, we were getting like 50 requests a day for crypto influencers. And they didn't exist yet because, I mean, the market hadn't been around that long. So there was only a couple out there. It was hard to tell know who knew what they were talking about and who didn't and I had to learn and Heidi started learning her crypto information from a guy named Trayvon James <laughs> eventually she found crypto Bobby it all turned out okay uh, I rotated to maybe a hundred I'm not joking I think I saw a hundred and I had no knowledge of crypto whatsoever and I'm like I'm never gonna learn this Heidi gave me a book told me to read a book I, I threw it in my desk never looked at it again found crypto love now, here I am, I get to introduce him, it's amazing. I gave him that hat last night, by the way, I'm happy he's wearing it. All right, the man of the hour, the one and the only, Ken Bosak. How goes it? I'm Ken Bozak, not an expert. I've been in Bitcoin since 2015, and 30 days after hearing the word Bitcoin, I sold everything I owned for it. Uh, I sold my Xbox, my TV, my recliner. I uh, went to like clothing st stores that buy your old clothes and sold all my clothes. I pretty much sold everything I owned uh, to get into Bitcoin. Uh, I wasn't making very much at my day job. So I thought now or never, right? Like I didn't have a savings account because I didn't make a much, enough money at my day job to have a savings account. So I had to spend the items I accumulated over time for Bitcoin. And most of the people I sold my belongings to was on Facebook Marketplace, which eventually 12 months later turned into most of my clients as I became a, con a con uh, as I started doing more consultations um, in this space. Uh, yeah, they saw my TV, I sold them, turned into 10 TVs in 12 months. And I still have yet to buy my TV back. I'm hodling my Bitcoin, not really watching much TV anymore. This is my 25th conference this year. I just flew in last night, uh, Crypto Love, we were at Token Fest, and right before Token Fest, I was in Barcelona with uh, Charlie Lee at the cruise. I, uh, I'm all in on crypto, guys. I don't use fiat, I opted out of fiat, opted into crypto. I don't really hodl much. I put one Bitcoin away forever. Poof, gone. It's away. Uh, I earn and spend crypto daily, like most of you earn and spend money daily. Uh, just my money's better than yours. That's all. Thank you. Uh, I didn't introduce myself because I am a, a nobody. I am just a fan. But uh, you caught my intro at the beginning about mass adoption. There is a little story to that. Uh, growing up in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, one day I came home and realized that uh, we had lost our house and I was homeless. And the reason why 
is because my mother fell for a telemarketing scam to refinance her house from a guy in Sweden. And when Heidi recruited me for this project, uh, you know, I was very, very passionate more I got into it. I realized how many people are getting scammed. I, Heidi herself almost got scammed by Trayvon. Uh, <laughs> mass adoption can happen, good or bad. If there, I mean, everyone has YouTube. Who watches YouTube? Everybody. You don't, you're, you're lying. And if you watch the wrong people, then the, you mass adopt the wrong information. You'd be surprised how many people in the Midwest, which is that gray, that area that, that Beatles accidentally hit, uh, that their information about crypto is incorrect because they heard it from someone who gave them bad information. So we got to make sure it gets mass adopted in the right way. So my first question to start this panel is, what does mass adoption mean to you? Start with blood. Yeah. Feel free to interrupt each other if you like. Don't interrupt me. Oh, damn. <laughs> damn. <laughs> Are you done yet? Time's up. <laughs> um, mass adoption looks like people actually using it. I saw a uh, Litecoin uh, candy machine out there. and that I mean, it's silly, but it, it kind of drives home the point that, you know, a lot of people aren't actually using cryptocurrencies. And so um, when I started my channel, I had a merch store I set up on my website. And, and this was in the height of the whole 2017 mania. You wouldn't believe how many people were like, because uh, I only accepted cryptocurrencies on the website. They're like, uh, can you do PayPal? Um, how do you even use this to buy a shirt? I'm like, so you're buying cryptocurrencies, you know, and you're not even using them. You're speculating on them. So I think the usage of the the coin is what mass adoption looks like. And actually, ironically enough, mass adoption looks like a stable price. Um, so, yeah, that's what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with that. I think I think also familiarity, right? Because, again, going back to my anecdote from earlier, we've got the, the gentleman that owns a Bitcoin, $20 worth of Bitcoin, rather, and has no idea how to utilize it at all. So people becoming more familiar with it, but, but also understanding. And I think part of that is there's got to be more options. You know, I've, I've got a number of employees that work for me across the globe, and I pay their salaries in Ethereum because I can pay them right now. Yeah, you know, for very cheap. And so I'm actually utilizing it in my business. Um, there's just not enough places to go spend it. Occasionally I'll buy plane tickets with it, but you got to turn it into a gift card to then buy a Cheapair.com. You don't have to do any of that, bro. Really? All right. Straight up. Cheapair.com. Right. Hotels, car rentals, and flights. All right. Good to know. So, You'll get the check later. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, click the affiliate link. I've been trying. They ain't interested. <laughs> But yeah, I think I think familiarity and just more than you know, it's as soon as grandma can use it without fear of getting scammed, right? I mean, your your grandma's not going to remember your public address, but she wants to send you fifty bucks for your birthday or whatever. You know, it's it's until it's easy enough for her to just go and send and understand it. That's what mass adoption is, in my opinion. We're getting there. You can pay some of your employees with uh, smart domain names from Ethereum. I'm Ken Bozak Eth, and you can send me Ethereum right to my name. Right on. And I also own TravonJames.eth and CraigGrant.eth if you'd like to send me eth through that too. Yeah, I echo the same, uh, the same thought process. I think, now I think I take a little bit of a different approach because I come from um, the traditional background. I think part of mass adoption I think is going to be coming through blockchain technology being implemented into existing companies and showing the, uh, the, the use case for um, how blockchain can be used. Now, I also agree that education of the masses and the ability to use uh, Bitcoin or whatever coin you choose to make you know, daily purchases that you're making is definitely an important factor. I just bought my wife a laptop off of Newegg and I paid with Bitcoin and it was awesome. You know, so there's opportunities out there that we're using. I think we're so set in a mindset of fiat currency that it's 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 one. It's just so you know, socially and culturally we've been trained that way to use a dollar. But I think we really need to, as you know, everybody in this room are all advocates. No matter what camp you sit in, are advocates for cryptocurrency. And I think the more we're educating the public, those of us who have a voice are educating the public on how it can be used and how it can be beneficial. Um, you know, my story specifically, I used to run a development firm. And one of my clients paid me in Bitcoin. And I, at the time, I really didn't even know it was. This was back in, uh, I don't know, 2013, 2014. And my immediate answer to that was to cash out the, three, the two Bitcoin that I was paid. Without, you know, knowing, fast forwarding to today, what that was worth. It was like, it was like $400. So, 
my lack of education on what cryptocurrencies were, what the future could be, you know, is an example of how I missed out. But so I think that can be a, that can be an asset too. I bought a Bitcoin. In, I bought a Bitcoin in two thousand like twelve, and I don't know the well. I don't know where it's at. I just never kept up with it. It's there somewhere. I, I I've spent many sleepless nights trying to find it. No idea. Did you check your pocket? <laughs> Ken, check my pocket. Don't steal my wallet. I said don't <laughs> steal my wallet. So I think for this, there's two sides, right? You got blockchain, and then you got cryptocurrencies. And so for mass adoption, you're going to have to have something that people are using that it doesn't require them to know anything about either. So for you know Facebook, for instance, I would say you know people hit that thumbs up button, and it just works. They don't understand the algorithm. They don't understand the protocol. They don't understand any of that stuff. But when they hit the little thumbs up button, they put a little like right there in that photo, that video, whatever, gets their thumbs up. And so it's going to be the same thing with cryptocurrency and with blockchain. We're going to see it, and we're not going to know that that's what it is. And then we're going to actually be using it, and then everybody's going to start using it because it's better than the stuff that's out there that they're using every day. Until that happens, we'll never have mainstream adoption. It's just going to be a bunch of guys that, you know, are coders or evangelists or something like that. So the tech has a long way to go before, you know, we have mass adoption. But I think we're going to start seeing some really cool things in the space here shortly when people are using it and don't know that they're using it. Yeah, I'm going to agree with Beatles there. I think that when people are using it and they don't know about it, then that's going to be mainstream. But also, I was really inspired by Ken uh, a couple of weeks ago. We were talking about in, talking to each other in Chicago, and uh, I found out that he does everything with cryptocurrency. And I said, you know, I'm supposed to be someone who people follow in the cryptocurrency world, and I don't even do that. So I've been working towards that, and I noticed that there are some obstacles to come up. But I'm learning that type of stuff, and it's kind of like what Gandhi said, where he's like, "Be the change you want to see in the world." Well, if I want a world that has mass adoption, I need to be totally adopted myself. So that's something that I'm working towards. And I think uh, probably the more of us that take that on to actually use cryptocurrencies every day and in every situation, the sooner everybody else has to learn about it because if they don't use it, you're talking to them about cryptos and it gets them engaged. Word. Uh, to me, mass adoption is the opt-in, right? Like, nobody forced anybody like my mom to make a Facebook account. She hated Facebook, but guess what? She had to eventually because all the cool kids had one, right? I see a room full of cool kids here, and eventually your mom's going to get Bitcoin too if she hasn't already, which I bet most of you already got your parents some for Christmas or birthday, wedding presents, etc. To me, mass adoption is the opt-in wave we are waiting for, and it's taking place. You know, we have... Uh, Cash App opting in to accept Bitcoin and their app that works has always worked. They don't need Bitcoin. Uh, we have Overstock, Newegg, Cheap Air, all these things popping up to just make it not just easy, but easier than the traditional means of purchasing things like a flight. I just don't want to give you 13 things of information just to pay you for a flight. I'd rather just scan a QR code and get on with my day. And that's where it's really coming down to. People are opting into what we are doing and opting out of the traditional banking system. More people have been hurt by it than have benefited from it since its inception. We have a lot of victims that we have that are looking for uh, outlets that really could potentially change their lives. And they're seeing people like me and all of our lives change exponentially because we chose to opt out of dollars and opt in to cryptocurrencies. And we're watching it happen with you guys attending here today. So thank you all for not watching Netflix and actually coming and hanging out and learning about crypto with us. I, I just want to add one more thing really quickly. Uh, if I'm Are you done yet? I'm not. <laughs> we're just getting started. That, that's going to be the running gag all We're just all getting panel. started. We've already got it. No, but seriously, um, on the other side, I'm, I own several businesses. And you have chargebacks. I've, I've, I've come into those, right? With coin, with cryptos, you can't have a chargeback. There's no counterparty risk there. So that's she another is thing. EOS. Huh? Oh. EOS. No, no, no. But you can, um, there, that's, the, that's the beauty. And so if we can get more merchants to understand that now you don't have to worry about chargebacks, there are a lot of... If uh, the merchants are privileged enough to be able to use Visa to even have chargebacks be a problem, you know what I mean? That's a privileged situation sure, that you have sure. a business that can accept Visa, man. That must sure. be awesome. What sure. about the guys that don't have driver's license or state IDs that can't right. get a bank account but still want to sell lemonade and have the security of what feels like a bank account? That too, yeah. So it, there are so many um, 
things, so many benefits of cryptocurrencies that many people aren't thinking about. So, Ken, is that a Monero tattoo on your arm? I have six cryptocurrency tattoos, and I don't own a single Monero. I just got this sentimentally. Like most of my currency tattoos are just like sentimental, but I do have a few. So I'm actually going to use that. That's actually a form of mass adoption in, in, in a way. When people start He's got loving a QR it, so much, code but, this is my first Bitcoin address I ever opened ever. I took a screenshot of it, and for the one-year celebration of my portfolio's gains, I went out and found a guy who wanted to give me a tattoo for Bitcoin. So I gave him a whole Bitcoin, and he did this tattoo for me. That was in 2016. Did he hold it? Oh yeah, no, we're still friends. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He held. Uh, he wishes he got a little bit more during Christmas, but uh, he's happy he's holding. No, but but that's actually uh, that is a good way to mass adopt. Or maybe it's not. I don't know, but it's trying. I know that Beatles, you have a NASCAR for 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 your uh, company, Monarch, and Miggity Miner. I like to go fast. And Crypto Love, their logos are on that NASCAR. So mm -hmm. that's another form of a mass adoption. How is that working out for you? Uh, for the NASCAR? Oh yeah. No, oh, you know it's it's great advertising. It's great marketing. You know, it's it's cool to be able to just you know get new eyeballs outside of the crypto space onto crypto, right? That's that's part of bringing mass adoption, letting people know that there's other options out there, like Ken was talking about. So, yeah, I mean, it's you know if you're looking for a return on investment, it's probably not there yet. But as far as you know, bringing new people into the space, you know, it's cool for that. And I've been to those NASCAR events. Miggity was at one as well, and they're a lot of fun. And it's it's crazy because I never got into NASCAR until. We were involved with NASCAR on crypto. Mm. And, uh, you know, like, even if the cars didn't win, still when one had, like, a brake failure and it slammed on the wall 200 miles and rode <laughs> halfway around the track, it got a lot of airtime. So <laughs> it was a lot of good publicity. So if you guys want to sponsor a NASCAR, CryptoRusty.com. But anyway. Yeah, there, there seems no to be a lot going on between cars and crypto recently. I just talked to a guy at the, the Mediterranean Cruise the other day who's doing, uh, the, he's just sold the gumball rally. Guinness World Book of Records, most cars in a rally, and he's doing a Bitcoin rally. So, um, yeah, it might be something for you in there. Yeah, and, and just on the, since we're on the NASCAR deal real quick, I mean, to give you guys an example of some of the advertisers we've had on there, it's uh, Dragon Chain, ARK, TradingView, um, Monarch Token, um, RewardsToken.com. So there's a lot of companies that are seeing that avenue, so it's been pretty cool. So a big, a big part of mass adoption is knowing what, how you reach your audience. You said something great, Ken, about giving your, your grandma Bitcoin. Like, it's up to all of us a little bit to spread the love. Uh, you know your friends. You know your family. You know the best way to get them involved. If this is something that you believe in, then, then give them that gift. On that, on that case, going into a little bit, you all know your audiences for your YouTube channels. You know your audience better than anyone else. Uh, it's a very, very personal relationship. Why? Does your audience watch you? Start with blood. Why start with me, man? <laughs> Are you done yet? I am not. <laughs> Why? I don't know. I think it's just a, a unique uh, take. You know, a, a unique flavor that I bring to the to the space. I have my, you know, I have my agenda. I do it my way. Um, I, I like to have my uh, subscribers really get engaged. You know, they can send song requests in. You know, I, I talk to, I try to respond to every comment. Um, and, you know, that's that's just me. I'm really down to earth, and I just keep it straight up 100 with you. And, and that's how it's going to be. So um, I'm always looking to educate individuals with no funny stuff and, and just give you the real. And so that's what I do. So my avenue was a little bit different, right? Because I actually just ended up getting put on to the channel that already existed. And uh, that was a strange thing for me because I, I thought I was going there to do a lot of ops type stuff. And they were, and you know, so anything, next thing I know, I'm on the channel. And I, I've just found that I've built my own audience because they like me, right? They they like what I say or, you know, I'm, I'm prone to ranting. I like to get wound up and start ranting and apparently that's entertaining. And so, uh, you know, I get a lot of people that like that. And, then, and I think, like what he said, I'm just genuine, you know, I'm, if, if nothing else, I'm, I try to give as unbiased and honest opinions. I, you know, I, I never hide if I'm doing sponsored content. I just try to be as straight up as possible and try to really explain why this stuff should be important to you. Yeah, I think, you know, it was interesting when I started my channel because, again, it was a hobby when I first started. And um, I think 
when I being working on YouTube is actually really lonely because you're when you watch us on YouTube, you feel like we're talking to you or you feel like we're interacting with you. We're just staring at a computer and a camera and it can be a really lonely space when you're actually on YouTube. Um, it's funny when people come up to you and they, they think you, they kind of know you and you don't have a clue who the person is. Right. But um, and a shout out to my subscribers because I'm, I'm streaming live right now. So shout out to the to everybody who's on. Um, Likewise. But Down I, that like button. But I think being being completely genuine, honest, and real. I think any of us that come in this space and say that we know everything or that we're, you know, super educated, that we have to have something to share and something that we feel like we can give some insight into. But I think just being really open and transparent. I always try to picture, so I'm staring at the computer. I try to picture my friend who's sitting in front of me, and he's asked me a question. I'm trying to explain that question to him and help him get to the next level. I always encourage anybody who, if you have this much knowledge and somebody else has this much knowledge, you have something you can share. Um, so that's really what I try to do on my channel is share what I know and be very open and honest when I don't know the answers to the questions that are being asked. Right on. Yeah, so um, I guess the start of my channel came from, I don't know if it was laziness or just necessity of my friends, but they kept asking me the same questions over and over again. Mm -hmm. And they're like, hey, you know what, why don't you just start a YouTube channel? And I'm like, well, I don't know, that seems kind of dirty. You know, I don't know. It's, <laughs> I, I, I build businesses. Dirty. I really don't want to be, you know, you know, sitting in front of a webcam, whatever. But I tried it, right? And so, um, you know, and basically all I, I came out right at the time where the market was at the peak, and I was explaining to people, you know, how dangerous it is, how they can lose everything, how, you know, what they, they need to set a number and, and if they hit it, run, get out of the space at this point because it's very, very dangerous. Plus showing them, you know, the, the basics of how to use cryptocurrency, how to use exchanges. So, you know, just kind of all the fundamentals that people were trying to figure out but couldn't really go to one place, to one video to kind of get all that. So I did that for my friends and then it just kind of spiraled, right? They, they started wanting more. And then I started getting approached by different people in different parts of the world that, um, you know, they would share their story with me. And so I decided to start giving away, uh, you know, free Ethereum on every one of our uh, every one of our shows. So that hundred bucks that I give away allows them to participate in crypto. So that way, if they need to pay for goods or services or something like that on the other side of the country or other side of the world, um, you know, they're able to do that. And so what we do is we just bring, you know, the CEOs and founders of these various companies, you know, onto, um, you know, our channel. We never, ever accept any kind of, you know, money or crypto or anything like that whatsoever. It's just unbiased. And we just let our crowd, we just let the audience decide whether this is a project that they like, they love, they hate, don't care about, whatever. And so, you know, it's it's actually, you know, done pretty well because it's just unbiased content. And then at the end, they're able to actually win 100 bucks. So it's kind of a way of trying to give back and, and help educate and learn with everybody at the same time. $100 in Ethereum, too. $100. Yeah. Not $100. Yeah. <laughs> so I think people watch my channel because... We love you. Yeah. Beard. It's that glorious beard. I love you too. It's because of the boom shakalaka, personally. It could it could be. I was saying I was thinking like beards or unicorns, but also boom shakalaka, lots of love, all that fun know. stuff. Yeah. So I think that's probably why people watch my channel. Uh, it's kind of changed a lot over the past year and some because you know in the beginning everybody in the beginning I didn't know what I was doing, so I was just you know doing reviews and whatever I thought was necessary, a lot of tutorial stuff. But as times have changed, like. During the, the altcoin bubble of December, January, everybody wanted like reviews and ICO stuff, so doing that. Now nobody cares about reviews or ICOs, so there's more news and uh, interviews and things like that. So always trying to find out what it is that I can provide and then to do that and have fun. Because I like to be, you know, I'm very enthusiastic about cryptocurrencies and so sharing that with people. Because I was doing this before just for myself before I got into YouTube. I was just doing it all the time anyways, so I was, now I can share that with everyone. That's what I really enjoy doing. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I guess for myself, um, I guess because around the time I got in, uh, Bitcoin was at its all-time high since it, you know, its bubble popped from uh, $1,100 down to uh, under 100 and I got back in at the all-time high of four whole hundred dollars per Bitcoin. I was insane selling everything I owned for $400 Bitcoin at its, at its all-time high since it popped. Um, I made a few interviews. Uh, actually, the first month I was into Bitcoin, I've interviewed Andreas Antonopoulos. 
And then from there, I've interviewed people from Charlie Lee, the Trace Mayer, Amir Russick, um, Chris Dunn, Every, a lot, Max Kaiser, <laughs> Crypto Love. I've interviewed a lot of amazing people in this space. Ryan X. Charles from yours.org. I play Fortnite with Vinny Lingham. I mean, I've met a lot of people and made friends with them in this space over the years. So, I mean, a lot of the people that follow me, mostly now on Twitter, I've pretty much walked away from YouTube. Um, if you followed me, I got hacked a while back. The hackers had access to my YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Google, Dropbox, everything. So it kind of made me not really want to put as much effort into my channel as I used to since it was just taken from me so easily with nothing I could do. The YouTube does not have a phone number for support on this. Good luck if it happens to you. Um, I really needed luck and I got it. Got my channel back. Uh, then I got hit with a strike for calling out a scammer who stole $20 million worth of Ethereum from people at Consensus. I uploaded it to YouTube. YouTube deemed that internet bullying and inter uh, internet harassing and terrorism, so I got flagged. So I pretty much walked away from YouTube, and I would love to encourage all of you to use Steemit, DLive, DTube, BitTube, and talk about your unconfiscatable, immutable, sensor-resistant money and technology on an actual platform that is what you're talking about. Thank you. Yeah, well, Thank the difficulty you. there but is it that's not Google where the AdSense. eyes are currently. It doesn't have Google AdSense, so a lot of YouTubers will justify this with, but we need to hit the mainstream audience. Jason, what were you saying? Yeah, that's it. I mean, I'm, I'm going to try to go and spread my message. Two minutes where, to upload everything you've ever put are. on YouTube onto BitTube. I could help you after this. Two minutes. Sweet, let's talk. But I'll, ultimately, I, I'm not opposed. To, I have a Steam account. I'm not opposed to any of that stuff. O honestly, I think that's where we need to go eventually. But unfortunately, right now, the user experience isn't there, and the people aren't there. So it's, it's irrelevant. But if you bring I, the if people, the experience shouting, will get better. If I'm shouting at a, in an empty room... You know, if I'm shouting at an empty room, what's the point? Nobody's there to hear me. I'm trying to go where the people are listening. You, can put, a, you can put a 10 second, 20 second, one minute clip on YouTube and say, hey, come follow the rest of this awesome shit on Steam It. Fair. Thank you. If you build it, they will come. That's what I'm saying. If we, if we bring this quality, quality information to the platform, the people will come. They're not going to build a better platform and hope that you come. You go to it. Help the developers have a reason to build it better, make it better, and fix the bugs, dude. Go through the bugs with us. We are literally living in the beta of money. I am a premium expense payer of a currency that is not ready for anybody to use it. I'm paying a premium to be a bounty bug tester for Bitcoin, and so are all of us. And if you're not willing to go through all of the bugs, then you're probably just figuring out how can I make more fiat at the end of the day. So I'm, I'm going to use that, actually. So... It's not just YouTube. You guys, a lot of you are, are known for YouTube, but I mean, mass adoption just happens for whatever's available. There's Facebook, there's Twitter, there's Steam It, there's the other 212 things that, that Ken just said. <laughs> what, what do you feel is, is the best avenue for mass adoption? What should we be concentrating on? What, what, how should these platforms help support uh, being able to... to well, it's not a binary thing, so yeah. you, can, you can cross publish on on multiple uh, platforms like ben, like uh, Ken was saying um, I use Viewly um, I've used that um, but again it's, it's it's difficult for me to use it because I have to send Ethereum and the gas and you got to wait and MetaMask and all that so it's still in the very infancy but you can cross publish I think uh, we should definitely all do that and just encourage but again like like my man said people aren't on those platforms yet so we got to get them to get over there um, Ken has a good idea with, with doing a video and having them bounce over there that way. But, uh, yeah, I think most people are still going to be on your YouTube, your Twitter, and in your Facebook. So, Yeah, I think gotta, you, gotta, you know, another thing, yeah, and I understand exactly what you're saying completely, Ken. But well, the other thing, and I understand your perspective, for the average investor in cryptocurrency, though, their goal is to turn it into fiat, mm -hmm. which I... Yeah. I mean, that yeah, but to be an investor in crypto is a privileged move. You're making a profit off of people that are disenfranchised that are have to adopt it and use it. But what I'm saying so is you're, the, you're, average, you're a the average guy at the corporate office whose buddy says, hey, man, you should check out Bitcoin. His end goal is because you can make fiat from mm -hmm. it. And I get that. And I think when it comes to mass adoption, we have to understand as much as as deep as we are in cryptocurrency, you also have to realize that when you're talking to 
the normal guy, he's seeing it as another opportunity for a different stuff. Right, and he's privileged. You know, that's awesome that you get to invest in something that you don't necessarily need to make the quality of your life better. But the fact is that a lot more people do need it to make the quality of your life better, and you can invest in it to make a profit. You're privileged to do so. That doesn't make it right. That's not what's happening. We got a guy. We got a guy. There's a lot of talk about banking the unbanked, and all I really see is a lot of people making other ways to turn cryptos into crypto so they can extract fiat. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of people. You're right. They're probably all wearing suits with you and having dinner at fancy restaurants with you. You're you're in a very echo chambery environment, bro. Love got some comments. Ooh. Well, I saw that guy waving at me, so I wanted to wait. Yeah, back, yeah. So I think Hi. we'll get your question Hi. in a second. We'll get your question Hi. in a second. Uh, but I was just thinking. Oh, here comes here comes my oh. man. Okay, so I was just thinking while he's doing that stuff. Um, I saw an interview with Charles Hoskinson from Cardano with uh, Crypto Crow, where he was talking about their version for mass adoption is to going to underserved areas where they can't get banked, uh, but also they don't have to deal with all these regulations of people dragging their feet. So they're going to Ethiopia, where coffee production is huge, and getting them on supply chain blockchains, getting them using it to where they can track everything. Everyone's using cryptocurrencies. There's no regulations they have to go through. And that way, all these big, bloated, bureaucratic countries that are dragging their feet eventually will have to adopt it because the whole rest of the world has moved on without them. Yeah, yeah great point. I mean, with mass adoption, I think it's first going to come, you know, probably through the financial systems, right? So obviously, crypto is way better than fiat. Um, but then we need social media because social media, let's face it, that's where everybody's at, right? So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that kind of stuff. But to make that happen, we have to create something that's better than Facebook. So like we use Steemit, you know, to your point, we use DTube. But, you know, like if you try to upload a video to DTube currently, you know, it'll crash like nine out of ten times trying to do it. It's frustrating. So YouTube but, used to do that a lot, too, though. Yeah, it wasn't perfect out of the work gate through it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We still have to work through this all. So but for the mass adoption part, like we have to have better platforms than, than what's out there right now. So financial and then social, I think, is how how we can do it. So I, I got to follow up. What would be the advice to the industry to help help further mass adoption? Like you said, we need these platforms to help us do it more. And honestly, if it doesn't happen, Isn't, the industry may not evolve. So, what do you mean what by can it industry? Do? You mean like the crypto industry? Oh, the crypto. Or are you talking yeah. about like no, no, banking? No. How about both, crypto industry and then everyone else? Well, I, I just wanted to follow up with crypto love. I think that may actually be what what actually happens is that the adoption comes from the bottom up. So it comes from the poorer countries. That's why I like no shade at Litecoin, but like Dash, Digibyte, they're really on the ground doing it man they're in venezuela they're in brazil they're in argentina where these these currencies are collapsing against the dollar so it may happen it may be that it starts from the bottom up and 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 you know first world will be the last ones jason any rants i look forward to the day where a bitcoin is just worth a bitcoin and we don't care how many dollars or other you know i look forward to that day but until then we have to find a way to bridge we, Nobody's the whole world's not switching to cryptocurrency tomorrow guys, so we have to build the bridges We have to build the ramps and we have to we have to find the way that is like What is the middle ground to start bringing the masses over to it? And maybe it is going to the you know Maybe it is going to the small African nations and going that way I hope so what I fear about that is that people are going to go get them to adopt then extract the value on the back end And then there's you know nobody uses the network or, or the coin and they've just extracted the fiat value and further taken advantage of people that are already dis advantage sounds like you're talking about banks already right now as they are True. all right let's get this man's question you have a mic i do thanks you know you're talking about mass adoption and i didn't get into cryptos either learning about them or having any of them probably until february or march of this year so no <laughs> well, yeah i mean i feel like that's a great time so i feel good i, and I have a longer term view but you know, I really appreciate the comments. Ken, I love your comments. And frankly, dude, I admire the shit out of you. Thank you. Because you walk your talk, dude, and it's not easy. But here's my question, because I don't think this is a really easy thing yet. As long as you're having the fluctuations in value of crypto, as long as crypto is still being manipulated by large institutions who want to don't want this market running away without them, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to be hard to get people to massively adopt. It's like, would I use my Litecoin now at 50 bucks or 58 bucks 
or do I want to hold on till it, till it's worth 500 bucks? You know what I mean? Like there's, those are kind of real world issues, right? Um, you know, whether I get crypto or, or use crypto, you want me to stand up? Is that what you're doing? Okay, sorry about that. Um, do we, how do we adopt, even this whole issue you're talking about, about like how do you transition from YouTube to some of mm -hmm. these other platforms, you know? Even uh, Mike Adams at um, naturalnews.com started real.video so that he would get past censoring, you know, and he's yeah. encouraging people to get over. So, so I would say it's a risk-reward ratio. Um, does the risk of the volatility outweigh its reward? Can you use a bank without it stealing your money? Do you have the ability to open a bank account? Then maybe it's the, the volatility isn't for you. Uh, for me, like I said, I'm a beta tester. I'm riding the volatility train because I opted out of fiat. So that $50 Litecoin you're talking about, I've been earning crypto all week for the past three years. I get my, I get paid weekly through cryptocurrencies, bit wage. Yeah, bit wage. Uh, I get paid right into uh, uphold directly with crypto. But based on fiat and what that conversion rate is. Right, yeah. exactly. And I do ride the volatility. It's just the risk of that volatility is, outweighs the risk of the bank saying one day, no, you can't have your money. Or no, you can't have that much money. Sorry, that's too much money for your 24-hour limit. I'd rather have the Bitcoin or crypto volatility and have the permissionlessness of it rather than have the stability of a bank account and the risk of them not giving me two grand in one day out of the ATM machine if I needed it. Yeah. And also, also with these regular fiat to crypto payments, that's one of the best investment strategies for getting the best deal called dollar cost averaging. Yes, sir. That's your best right. way to get into right. any type of investment of an unknown value, some volatility. Well, so that but also really well. everybody on that stage, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, owned some amount of crypto before 2017. Yeah. 2015, yeah. So your yeah. portfolios have risen significantly it might be easier to begin adopting from that position we're talking mass adoption yeah, here yeah that's all. why i've been to 25 but, conferences trying to use that portfolio i've been blessed with to help people like you understand where i come from one of the Appreciate big things too i mean with mass adoption if we just have nothing but speculators out there we're never going to have mass adoption we're just going to have mass trading right so we need something stable that's why so much money is being put into stable coins right now trying to find the next one so whether it's you know the gemini brothers or whatever there's you know terra all these different things that they're coming up with trying to create you know the lack of volatility right the stability once you have that and you're able to use it in commerce without fearing of you know geez I, that that sandwich just cost me a car <laughs> you know or that or you know that was forty thousand bitcoins for that pizza. ten thousand yeah. bitcoin yeah <laughs> exactly right so you know that's what we really have to figure out. We need a, a solid, you know, reliable, dependable, stable coin that people can use in commerce, and then I think that's going to help a lot. You know what's funny, though? It kind of when you, what you made me think. Uh, Wells Fargo recently got caught opening accounts on people's behalf, stealing money from their clients, and people thought it would be a good idea to go down the street to a different bank because it's safer. You know what I mean? People still have faith in banks, bro, even though the bank has burnt them in directly and directly. Uh -huh. So I don't mm. think that we have to worry too much until they burn all of their own bridges. A blood. Uh, we have to wrap this up. So say what you're going to say, and I'm going to go into the uh, the wrap-up summer. I'm not Are you done, done yet? Are you done? I'm not done. <laughs> oh, he finally, he, he brought it back full circle. Give him a hand. <laughs> no, I was just, <laughs> I was just going to say that, uh, yeah, um, the cryptocurrencies, I think if mass adoption is going to be, it, it's got to be a, a coin that has some inflation. I know I'm probably going to get some pushback on that, but as you guys stated, I'm not going to spend my Litecoin today on food if I know in 10 years it's going to be worth something I can buy a car with. So, But what if you don't spend it and it does, that's why it doesn't go up? Butterfly effect. If we don't spend it, it won't go up. If we don't get people using it, it won't go up. But, but money is a means of, of transferring like value, right? So we have to transmit it, transact. So um, I don't know. But how about putting everything that you have into cryptocurrency as a, this is something that I'm working on right now. So putting everything that I have into cryptocurrency so I can use that as my system. Anything that I don't use, I'll have in the future, but putting it all in there because, you know, like Ken, I want to be able to walk. But even off. if, let's just say we took away fiat today, <laughs> guess what? We would have Bitcoin to Litecoin pairs and it would be fluctuating between them. You're all, you always need a base pair to, to value your currency on. You get what I'm saying? So you can take fiat away, but you're still going to have some trading pair that you need to create a perceived value on that. All right, Jason, I'm going to let you have the last words. I'm going to wrap this up. 
how many people out here own crypto? Just show of hands. Right. How many of you guys are how many guys how many of you guys are just holding it through the volatility and you don't care if it goes to zero? Serious serious question. You guys are awesome. That's that's that is fantastic. Round of hands for the audience. Yeah. Thank you. That's it. All right. So that was awesome. <laughs> we 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 heard quite a few uh, points uh, for mass adoption here. Um, I, I heard I heard many. One was, uh, like Love said, take it to somewhere where it can do immediate good and and change that culture and and the lives of people who live there for the better. Another one is to build a a platform that is is more suited to 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 an accessible pub public as as uh, Beatles said. Another thing is hold ourselves accountable for when things are not going the right direction or people are spreading misinformation. Uh, there, there, was, there were a lot of, of great points here, but I'm gonna tell you, these were, were trouble, these were troubleshooted problems from people who frankly are experts in the subjects because I'm no expert. they are the current front lines of mass adoption. No, no, yeah. you're, you're the experts in people. And financial advisors. You're <laughs> experts no, in don't, don't listen to that. They, they, they are experts in people. And this is not and how to content. get people to care about something. And as I said in the beginning of, of this, this show, this panel, uh, when your average Joe out there hears about blockchain and fear and whatever, and they don't know what those things mean, they will eventually, if they go looking for it, they'll be at YouTube inside of a minute. So we, it all starts with education. And, um, or, or as you said, making a product that uh, someone doesn't realize they're using, making a good blockchain product that the people using it don't, don't, they don't realize it's, it's blockchain. That's something I actually do, by the way, cheap pop. But um, yeah, so, so many good things. These men are the front line. Uh, they're the front line for mass adoption. And I think it, I, I, I feel privileged to be able to, to put them on stage and to uh, explain to you all exactly how important they are because they're not going to do it themselves. So to wrap this up, I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to say something nice about Ken. He's going to say something nice about love. He's going to go all the way to, to blood there. So... Ken, those are some sick cat tattoos, my man. You are definitely the best dressed, not maybe not the best looking, but best dressed man in this conference. I'll take that. Your passion. That is a true compliment. Your, your passion for, 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 for spreading blockchain technology, not, not, not so much cryptocurrency, but the technology. And, and you, you believe it will help change the world, uh, help change people's lives for the better. And your honesty, your passion goes out to everyone in the audience. And it will... They'll believe you, and they'll trust you, and they'll start using it. And I say thank you for that. Thank you. Crypto love, that marvelous beard of yours. Can I touch it? Just want to touch it. It <laughs> feels so to, soft. According to some people, if you rub my beard and my head at the same time, it makes wishes come true. Or oh, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> I feel luckier already. Hold on, making my wish. All right. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, Beatles, my man. So uh, I met Beatles uh, at NAC3 back at the beginning of this year, but immediately I saw probably one of the most authentic, uh, genuine, modest people I've ever met. And like, just the word integrity is just something that really stands out with you. And it's, it's kind of mind blowing all the stuff that you've done at such a young age. And how you have a twin brother slash son <laughs> goes everywhere with you. <laughs> hey, Aaron. <laughs> Stand up. Yeah, that's funny. Love you too. Yeah. I love you, man. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Reckon, right? You guys would have to watch the video to see that. Yeah. Yeah, Miggity. Oh, man, what a great guy. Uh, so, I mean, a lot of people don't know he was in law enforcement, too. So, I mean, he's got, uh, you know, some technical, some engineering law enforcement, I mean, a true uh, man of the people here. So great guy, you know, honest, you know, he's, um, you know, just tells people, you know, his unbiased opinions on things and he's just a stand up dude. And uh, a lot of people will be better off just listening to him and, and being more like him. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so it, we didn't know each other before this conference and we've had actually some good talks. Yeah. Um, it's been really enjoyable. You know, I think one thing we're kind of in the same boat as a lot of you as viewers, we don't, we don't interact a lot. We all interact maybe on Telegram or we'll communicate via chat, but we don't really know each other in a personal level. Some of us stream together and know each other in a deeper level. But um, it's interesting as we watch videos and form opinions on each other 
also. And I think I did the same thing. And meeting, we just realize when you're willing to have an open discussion, the depth of knowledge. And this guy has um, proven to have an extensive amount of knowledge. And just what he's doing is pretty phenomenal. So I definitely encourage you to check out his channel. I really appreciate the kind words. Thank you. Man, yeah, same like what he was saying. I did not know Crypto Blood before this. I, I am actually stunned by the level of intelligence. I didn't know, right? I mean, I've watched a number of YouTube channels, but there was a lot of people here that really impressed me. You know, like you, you're, I mean, stylish, smart. This guy's got a massive financial background, like he, and, you know, programming your own bots. Like that's an impressive skill set, man. And then plus he's just a knowledgeable, real person. So I, I think that about the, everybody that I've met that's been on these panels, I've, I'm, I'm very impressed with who they are as people. And Thank it's you. great to have some cigars. It. Yeah, <laughs> my man. You have Definitely. to compliment the tree now. <laughs> <laughs> ah, bring that, bring that full circle, brother. <laughs> so you or, uh, or Ken, which, I want to say something about Ken, too, though. <laughs> Go ahead. So, uh, Ken, he's been on my show before, and we got to get you back on. Uh, very genuine guy, um, a lot of energy, and I do really um, think you're doing a great job with, with just diving all the way in with the, with the crypto, something that I think none of us ha have done, you know. So, you know, you're really walking the talk and talking the walk, whatever, you know, however you say that, but I really, um, really admire what you're doing. Chuck. Oh, no. He called me Chuck. <laughs> oh, man, no. No, seriously, man, I, I really appreciate you um, just personally having me come out. Um, I, have a, I don't have a big channel like a lot of these guys. So um, even back when I was in New York, you had me come out for that. Um, you, you, I think you see the talent in people, and I appreciate that. No matter how big or small, you see genuine people, and, and that's who you, you've brought out to this conference. And uh, we just appreciate you. Are you done yet? I am done. <laughs> we are done. Hey, everybody, follow these guys' channels. You want to get, get a hold of Crypto Blood? It's Crypto Blood. Nice and easy. This is Crypto Somniac, the Miggity Miner, Crypto Beatles, Crypto Love, and Ken Bosak. If you care about me at all, it's at CryptoInfluence.io and Boosto.io. And uh, I, think, uh, I think Ken actually wants to wrap something up. Big thanks to Heidi and Adam. Thanks for, thank you guys for setting this up. Yeah, this, this was awesome. Well, well Does prepared. anybody need any help setting up a wallet on their phone? Just out of curiosity, if you do, I'll be outside recreationally indulging if you want to join me. Recreationally indulging. Do I have to give you my private keys? Never. <laughs> hey, we're all going to line up here and take a bow. Ken, don't leave the stage yet. Come on, guys. Pitch your opportunity. Thank you very much. Bad Crypto Podcast is coming up next. They're also amazing. They're big. They got kicked off of YouTube because they're too real. Money bags, Stay around, listen to them. They're doing their role for mass adoption. Yeah. Cryptocurrency. Crypto, crypto. ICO. ICO. FOMO. FOMO. Lightning Network.